Electric motors, exam style questions. Throughout this video, if you want, you can pause the question and try it beforehand. Then press play when you're ready for me to go through the answer. So in this question, we have a diagram of the left hand and we have to label what each finger represents. So starting with the top, the first finger represents the direction of the magnetic field pointing from north to south. The second finger represents the direction of the current, and this is always from positive towards negative. And finally, the thumb represents the movement of the wire, or the force. So here we have an electric motor. In part one, we want to describe the direction of the force acting on the wire AB. For this, we have to use Fleming's left hand rule. Remember that north to south is this direction, and the current going through the wire is going in this direction. So if you take out the left hand and hold it like this, we can see that the first finger is pointing in line with the magnetic field, and the second finger is also in line with the current. Now we can look at the thumb, and the thumb is pointing upwards, meaning that the wire is going up. How about if AB was on this direction? Well, we already know that this was going up. That means this one is going to go down. And the reason behind that is although both wires have the same magnetic field, they have different direction of current. So when you change the current, the direction swaps. And the same goes if you were to change the magnetic field. Part two. So just two changes that you could do to increase the force acting on the wire AB. Number one, we could use a stronger magnet, or we could have more current flowing through the wires. Okay, so just two changes that would reverse the direction of the force acting on the wire AB. So at the moment, the wires are going this way. The one on the left is going up, and the one on the right, AB, is going down. The question says, what could we do to the setup so that the wires go in this direction? So like we said, we could either reverse the poles of the magnets or reverse the direction of the current. So you have to do either one of those. You can't do both. If you do both, then the wire keeps moving in the same direction as original. Next question. A current flows through the coil of the motor. Explain why side A of the coil experiences a force. So this is side A. Now we know that this is just a basic wire. A wire that's inside a magnetic field. We can also see that a current is going through the wire. That means the wire will also have its own magnetic field. So now we have two magnetic fields, wire and permanent magnets interacting. When this happens, this creates a force. So number one, a current in the coil produces a magnetic field. This interacts with the magnetic field of the permanent magnet, creating a force in the wire. Okay, next part. Draw arrows on the diagram to show the direction of the forces acting on side A and C of the coil. So first of all, let's look at the direction of the current. So the current is moving around the wire and through the coil in this direction. These two are the most important arrows. Also remember that the magnetic field is pointing from north to south in this direction. So let's start with side C. Again, we're going to take out the left hand. So to find out the direction of side C, we have to match our first finger with the magnetic field and our second finger with the current. That's the first finger and the second finger. As you can see, it matches exactly with the side C. And the thumb is pointing upwards. So that means side C is going to move up. And therefore, side A will go in the opposite direction, down. When horizontal, side B experiences no force. Now remember, whenever you have a magnetic field and the wire is going through it, it will always experience a force, unless the direction of the current of the wire is parallel with the magnetic field. In this case, B 
and the field are parallel. So the current is parallel to the magnetic field and therefore it will not experience any force. Okay, what can the operators do to make the machine rotate faster? Number one, the operators could increase the current or they could use a stronger magnet. But of course, but of course in this scenario, it will be much easier to just increase the current. There's no need to rip up the machine and go and get new magnets. Okay, next question. So, is this device an electric motor, a generator or a transformer? Well, it's quite obvious that this video is about electric motors. But let's say we didn't know that. How would you identify this machine? Well, we have a supply of electricity or a cell over here, a permanent magnet with a north and south pole and a coil. And those are the main components of an electric motor. So just two changes to the electric motor, each one of which would make the coil spin faster. Okay, so number one, increase the current. And number two, use a stronger magnet. Make sure you don't say bigger magnet. The keyword here is stronger magnet. So just two changes to make the coil spin in the opposite direction. Number one, we could reverse the current or we could reverse the poles on the magnet. Remember, do one of them only. If you do both, then it'll keep spinning in the same direction as before. Okay, next question. So here we have an electric motor. When there is a current in the coil, the coil rotates continuously. Explain why. So this is a classic example of how does an electric motor work. Now it's worth four marks, so it's important to describe every single step. Number one, the current creates a magnetic field in each arm of the coil. The magnetic field of the coil interacts with the magnetic field of the magnet. This creates a force on the coil. The arms in the coil move in opposite directions, causing the coil to rotate. After half a turn, the split ring commutator swaps the contacts to keep the coil rotating in the same direction. Next question. So here we have a coil inside a magnet experiencing a current. The arrows labeled F show the direction of the forces acting on the sides of the coil. Describe the motion of the coil until it comes to rest. Now, notice something's missing here. If we look at all the electric motors we've seen so far, they all have one thing in common that was missing in the previous one. And that is, they all have the following, a split ring commutator. This one does not have a split ring commutator. Now we know a split ring commutator is very important as it enables the coil to keep moving round and round. So if you don't have one, such as in this example, what happens? Well, first of all, we can see that the coil is already moving somehow. So it's going to keep turning clockwise until it gets to the top. Then it's going to reverse in direction and then turn backwards until it comes to rest. And the reason this happens is because we don't have a split ring commutator to swap the contacts and allow the coil to keep moving onwards. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.